Probably the most often question that I get asked is how do I rebuild my hand warmer and should I get the carbon felt strip or should I buy a pad? And do I need springs or should I buy the catalyst pad? So we're going to cover those questions here and we're going to start with the carbon felt strip or the carbon felt pad. Why carbon felt? The reason is cotton has a very low burning temperature. You see the cotton in that mini hand warmer here and when it heats up, if you check your hand warmer, if you have one in the cotton, you will probably find it's all brown and charred. When that happens, it basically um, almost caramelizes the top in terms of creating a barrier to your vapors and the vapors have to get to the catalyst in order to have an exothermic reaction. You want to stop that from happening if you've already got the charred part on there. You have two options. You can pull all your cotton out and you can repack the whole reservoir from top to bottom with carbon felt. If you're going to repack reservoirs then you need the pad and you can cut it into small strips and use it to pack. It's not rocket science. Uh, cut the strips the size of your reservoir and about the width so the uh, that dimension by that dimension and just start packing the strips in and that's shown in other videos. When would I repack and when would I just perhaps use a strip? You can, if you want higher performance, you can have better permeation and evaporation which can result in some higher heat with repacking the entire reservoir with the carbon felt. If you only want to stop the top from getting charred and maintaining the normal performance, then you can just put a strip in the top. It's a more economical way uh, if you're not looking for high performance then that would work. So because refilling the reservoir with carbon felt is covered in other videos we're just going to go through the basic maintenance of putting in a strip and a new catalyst in the head and this is pretty much the same type of procedure for all the generic hand warmers from the Johnny, the Peacock, the Zippos you have to cut out uh, a couple of little bars at the top of the head. The only one that's a little different in terms of the catalyst would be the S Boston and we'll cover that later but the, putting a strip into the S Boston which is highly recommended is uh, easy enough to do if you already have one or if you get it from us it's already in there. First thing you're going to look at is the size of your carbon strip. If you're placing it on the top you want it roughly as to match the dimensions of the reservoir and warmer and a little bit larger for overlapping. So I just pick it up and stuff it in from each side with tweezers and then Just fluff it out like you're making your pillow when you were in the military with no creases in it, nice and flat and smooth. There you go. It's that simple. Now you've got the carbon felt in there. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to, in this one, we've got a new head and I'm going to remove the retainer and I'm taking out the Chinese catalyst which is there. Now you'll notice there are four tabs in this head and they were in there to hold the catalyst in place when we use a spring and that's how we're going to repack this. 
rather than just slice this and put it in. The spring retains it better. You will then, first of all, straighten those tabs out with a pair of needle nose pliers. This allows you to get the spring high in. What you want is oxygen around all sides of the spring because oxygen is required for the exothermic reaction and the more oxygen the more heat. Now that the tabs are straightened <clears throat> we'll just insert the spring and for that you can use forceps or you can use a pair of tweezers. put it down nicely and what I like to do is then angle those tabs just in a bit it helps hold the spring in place uh, you don't have to but it's a good finishing touch and it helps on some heads you can decide on some heads you may not even see the spring. Now the spring with the catalyst is in there and that's your hand warmer rebuilt and ready for refueling. Remember don't overfill because the fuel, the naphtha, if your catalyst gets wet with it, it contaminates it and then diminishes the performance. You don't need this tab anymore once you've used the spring. And after you have let, if you've overfilled your reservoir, just dump it out, squeeze it somewhere over the sink, obviously not over a fire somewhere where it won't uh, where it's safe and let uh, the excess drip out let it dry for a while and then place the head on and because it's still full of fuel do not let it sit upside down and have liquid fuel contaminate the head so keep it upright and uh, keep it upright for a while even after it's lit and that's how you do that one. Next we'll go on and demonstrate putting carbon felt strip in the S Boston. I use an S Boston myself along with uh, circular hand warmers. I use quite a few different ones. I, I like the S Boston for the increased amount of heat, the convenience of the lighting and the better quality of the build. However, uh, this black one is my own. I did, after the first use, already see the cotton starting to char. <clears throat> so I then put a carbon felt pad into it. And now I don't have to worry about diminished performance due to the cotton getting charred and creating a vapor barrier. Here's a brand new one. <clears throat> I've got a strip here and I'm going to place it in there. You can see it's too wide. So all I'm going to do is take my scissors and trim it a wee bit. I don't need to do too much. And that may work. We'll give that a go again like last time. I place one end in and I escort it over to the far side plump it out and there we have <coughs> the carbon belt excuse me <coughs> should have brought some water in with me the other part with the catalyst head will be a little more interesting and I'm going to have to 
figure out how to do that on my S Boss, and I'm still using the original catalyst. And you can see if you're going to do the catalyst, the head is got there's a bulkhead built into here, and it's crimped in. It's it's uh, retained by a crimp. You can see there, right there, and so I'll have to flatten that crimp out. Then you pull the retainer out. You'll be able to replace the catalyst and you may have to reestablish the crimp and I will do that either later in this video or in another video. Okay, I've been putting this off because the catalyst is still fine in my own S Boston but I might as well see if it is possible to replace the catalyst in there. The first thing will do is where it has a, no a little bit of a knockout crimp to retain the bulkhead that's in there. We're going to have to straighten that and uh, to do this with pliers you may end up scoring this part of your case. So if that's the case you could place something there to help protect it or put a piece of tape over. So I think I'll go grab and find a piece of tape and uh, apply it before I try and straighten that knockout. To remove the partition that's holding the catalyst head, I've put tape on both sides to avoid scoring with the pliers. You also have to be careful you don't bend your top of your case. Run the pliers down in, push the divider down and then straighten out or flatten by squeezing your pliers. The little tab has been pushed in. Then with needle nose pliers grab the lip of that divider. There's just enough there. There's probably about uh, no, there's enough on the edge there you can get it with your pliers and then pull up hard on it and you can remove that divider and there you see the catalyst and it's already in and so although I haven't tried it yet I'm guessing, and I'm not going to pull that one out because it still seems to be working fine, but in the long run, when that does go, I will try and see if I need to use a spring in there or if I just cut a flat pad and go from there and it's looking like perhaps the spring is not going to work. It'll be too compressed and tight because it's a smaller catalyst. So this is probably where the catalyst pad would come in. You would cut a square piece about the same size as that and it looks like one of these pads would potentially do, what would it be? three. Yeah, I'd say you might get three or a minimum of two rebuilds on your S Boston. And um, now you can see the igniter in there. Looks like it's just a filament that uh, goes from positive to negative and then heats up when you push the trigger on it, which is what you can see happening there right now. It's heating up. And that's all that's required to, to light and warmer. So that's the S Boston. Slightly different for the catalyst. The same thing for the carbon felt. For, I forget, probably get the question, well how do I get it back in? 
which uh, obviously I would think would be the reverse of taking it out. Angle it in so that the east side, because that's pointing east for me right now, is under the tab for the rubber side. And remember that the catalyst goes over top of the heating filament, which is on that side, which corresponds with the side that the trigger button is on. Then once that's down in place, you're going to want to seat that back underneath the tab and it's probably just going to hold it anyway and you don't have to get too worried about however if you did flatten it out enough that it's not holding then you'll remove your tape and then you will take something like a small jeweler's screwdriver and re-establish, push that tab back down. I'll see what I've got laying around that might facilitate that operation. I've been looking at the S Boston and found a small slot screwdriver which I could probably use to push this tab back down by perhaps giving it a couple of deft taps at the risk of dulling the blade on the end of there if I ever wanted to use it on a watch or something or just breaking it. However, before I do that, when I look at the geometry of this S Boston, I don't think I'm going to bother because I'll do some trial and error but if you have a look at where that tab is and where this goes down when it seats you can see that this head holds that bulkhead in position anyway it can't fall out and the spacing is still correct when it's on there. It can't get pushed too far down in. It's only keeping it from going toward the bottom of the hand warmer. And of course, it can't go any further than that anyway. So I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is so that if I wanna replace the catalyst next time, I can do it easily. So there you go. If you're doing the catalyst head in an S Boston until I make further inroads, perhaps finding smaller springs, which I can do. Uh, I'll probably look into getting a spring that is more appropriately sized. And the problem with springs is, is um, not only there's a bunch of considerations with the springs. You have to have the right material, the right tensile strength, the right diameter of the coil at the right length and width. So a little bit of experimenting this season and maybe in a month or so we'll be doing another video with replacing the S Boston heads with catalyst springs rather than having to cut the pad up and see how that works.
really... This is Ron Tessalini. Um, Mr. Tessalini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> trying to have a shower. We're taking water from Bryant Creek. We've never done this before. Larry Gilmore. Over 60 years of combined experience between these two gentlemen, and they've never done it before. Okay. Here we go. Get a few inches. We have to sign off now. Thank <laughs> you.